who don't know me and <laughs> who haven't read this slide, I'm Philip Wallagen. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm uh, 37. And uh, I really need your help today because, to be honest, uh, I've been really happy with what I've been doing lately. Uh, so much that I've been actually uh, annoying people with uh, how well things are going. But I'm going to make sure that we all know why we're here and why I think this presentation will be um, valuable and important to you because at the end of the day, that's, that's what, it, what it's about. And maybe you're working a creative job, maybe you're working uh, as a regular contract, maybe you're a freelancer, maybe you're building a business, but I would really like to um, tell you how I got started and, and what my backstory is. So hopefully you can uh, relate a bit. So like I said, I'm 37. Uh, I started my digital design journey when I was uh, about uh, 17, 18 years old. So it's almost uh, two decades ago. And uh, I didn't really have a great start, to be honest. Uh, I started a web design company, which uh, I ran for seven years. We grew to four people, but to be honest, we really didn't make any money. Whenever I was talking to small business owners and asked them, why do you do what you do? And how do you separate yourself from your competitors? How do you stand out? And what problems do you solve? The question that I always got was, stop asking these difficult questions. I just need a website. And that's when I know or noticed that I was in the wrong place and I was talking to the wrong people. So at some point, I think a lot of us might maybe recognizes these challenges going from project to project or projects simply never end. Uh, imposter syndrome, of course, is some of the things we all run into. Um, work life balance can be tricky. And I think one of the most recognizable things is that when you're actually not able to really sell yourself, work comes your way. So if you think, or if you find yourself like, hey, how do you get your work? And you would say, well, most of the work comes to me, then I would really like to challenge you and think about, well, is that actually the work that you would love to do? Is that the reason why you started doing what you're doing for those types of projects? But long story short, for seven years, hardly made any money. Uh, and I really wasn't a happy freelancer, but good news. It really doesn't have to suck. I hope it's okay for me uh, <laughs> saying that. And I just wanted to explain how that would look, because when you think about the downsides of freelancing and you're thinking about maybe the feast and famine cycle, you're super busy or you're doing a lot of sales. You get a, most of the time you get a lot of work, but then you are working day and night. And all of a sudden you're, you immediately stop doing sales because you're super busy. Then all of the projects end and all of a sudden you don't have any work and the money you made, the buffer, it just kind of runs out until you get your next project again. So you can easily get trapped in that. And I'd love to know, is that something that you guys can identify with? Is that something that you would run into yourself as well? Cool. But like I said, there's good news because at some point I discovered for myself design sprints. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Feel free to, to Google it. There's a lot of information out there, but it's basically a four day workshop that helps you to solve a very important problem for your client by creating a prototype and testing it with real users. And when I discovered that process, I was like, this is, this is great. You have a beginning point, you have an end. And all of a sudden your, your projects, you can say, well, we can do this in four days. Of course, you have a bit of preparation, uh, a bit of fine tuning at the end, you can do an iteration sprint, but you know that a project never really goes further than three or four weeks. And when you know that there's a time frame, you can also play around with pricing a lot more. Well, when I discovered design sprints, I thought this is amazing, but exactly at that point, that was when COVID hit. And I said, you know what? That collaboration is amazing. I really would like to see if we're able to actually do this online because I hate commuting. <laughs> it's, it's not a great habit, but I've wasted so much of my time traveling on, on trains and buses. I really didn't want to do that anymore. So on, <laughs> at some point, uh, the design sprints really moved on towards design thinking. And design thinking is actually, to me, the art of problem solving 
for those who don't know it, uh, it was well in invented. Maybe it's a bit of a big word uh, by IDOU or IDO. Sorry, IDOU is their university. And the idea is quite simple. We should always start with a question because we're looking for the answers for a question. And we can gather a bunch of inspiration, like how do other people solve it? Or maybe in a different industry, we, we're gathering ins inspiration, to be honest. Based on all that inspiration, we can come up with ideas, which we can make tangible. It could be a prototype, it could be a PowerPoint, a deck or a one page or PDF and test to learn, which is validation. And then they go on by sharing the story, documenting and sharing it. But I think that's uh, the last one for us is at this point, isn't that relevant? But when I notice myself, like I'm really unhappy in, in my freelancing right now, I, I like design thinking, I like design sprints, I like workshops. So I've actually used this design thinking methodology to really build my own business for it. And of course, that was when I discovered remote work as well. And I was happy enough to get yeah, connected with Miro. So it was a really nice experience also meeting the wonderful people uh, of Miro, uh, the teams, the people that are working on the tool, the product. And Miro just opened up a lot of doors for me when it came to building my own workshops. And I think building your own workshop can be something that will help you to stand out in the market as well. A workshop could be your product, which you use to solve a problem. And this is the part where I said, you know what, if you're not really happy with the way that you, your business is running or the work that you're doing, you can design your business. You can use design thinking to really um, figure out who you are as a person and, and what you stand for. So uh, it's, this is a triangle. It's not a fancy model. Don't worry. I, I won't go any into any rocket science complexity stuff right here. But what I believe is that you need to figure out three things. You need to understand who you are, what you're good at, your qualities, etc. You need to understand what problem you're solving and that this problem could be in a specific industry. And you want to really have a solution for that. And I think once you know th these three points, you can really productize your business. And what I mean with productization, not everyone is maybe is familiar with the term. I really mean turning your services, your unique services into products that you can sell. So think about a box of cereal uh, that you can find in the supermarket. It's tangible. You can pick it up, you see exactly what it is and how much it costs, and that is what you get. While traditionally with hourly billing as well, we kind of go into these fake long-term projects. We do some estimations, some weeks, um, but I think we should really get away from that. So let's talk about you. It's really the first part of that triangle. And a presentation is, of course, not complete if you don't include uh, a quote from Art Sun, uh, sorry, uh, the, the Art of War by Sun Tzu. And one of the quotes is, if you know yourself, if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you not need, you need not fear the results of 100 battles. And I think we can make this very simple. You see something underneath the title. It's called 16personalities.com. And it's a really amazing personality test. I haven't made it. I don't have any uh, stocks or shares. It's a free personality test that takes 10 minutes. And I would really rec uh, advise you to take this because this will give you a lot of insights about your personality. So when I did it, for example, which was also a really uh, insightful moment, because I discovered I have the same personality type as Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King. So I'm good but it's also the same personality type of lady gaga and john snow and i definitely identify as a john snow because i know nothing but the personality type is called the advocate and on the website of 16 personalities you can learn a lot more about it but every personality type has certain qualities certain skills and of course you can learn a lot of things but some of these would become would come more natural to you. So I think it's really important to take this with you 
and leverage this in your business and in your product, in your solution. So the test doesn't take long and I would really recommend to, uh, yeah, give it a go. Because what you want to understand and know from yourself is your personality, your skills, but also think about what, is, what are some of the things in the past that you've done that you're super excited about? What are some of the achievements that you made that you went home after work and you really had a big smile on your face? What was that specific thing? But also look back on the stuff that you really didn't like. Like when was that week when you had that experience? Like if I have another week like this, I'm quitting. Like I'm, I can't put up with this because those are the things that you really need to know and figure out. The next part is who do you help and why? It, to be honest, when you make slides like these, you really don't need to take any notes. It's amazing. But if you want to know uh, which problem you'll solve, you also need to think about who are the people who actually have these problems. And for the sake of the presentation and your time as well, I won't go into too deep, but we all know the personas or an ideal client profile. There are so many different ways of and sources or methods people build these profiles. But what you would like to do is really understand what type of industry would I like to work in? What type of uh, people work in that industry? What type of departments do specific companies have? And what are some of their pains? What are some of their challenges? And what do they want to achieve? Because at the end of the day, your solution, no matter how good it is, the value really lies in the, the complexity and the value, the importance of the problem that it solves. So I hope you can take that with you and really take the time to find a valuable problem to solve. Um, so here is where uh, I'm going to ask uh, assistance uh, from my wonderful moderator. Uh, we, uh, we had a chat beforehand. We're going to try to break the matrix, but I'm going to have to ask you to shout out your votes or at least vote with the poll tool that you can have. So. If everything goes well, you have the ability to now press a couple of buttons. So if you're eating or if you're all tubbing, like come back, take a second. And I would like to ask you which one of these industries would you like to have as an example right now to talk about the problems that they might have in the industry. And I'm going to give you a, a little bit. I. Uh, strategically removed my mug, which I would normally take a sip from while this poll runs, so it doesn't look too awkward while I just sit here. But right now, I have no other choice. So which one of these four industries would you like to get a couple of examples from, from what types of problems they would run into? So while the poll runs, and I'll give it a few seconds, I'll explain that this is also a part of what I'm currently doing, which is helping freelancers to really find out like, hey, what do you want to do with your freelance business? Uh, what type of freelancer do you want to be? So I think uh, with the poll still going on, I'm really curious to hear uh, something about the industries because I do think that the choice that comes out of this also tells a little bit about the audience that we have with us today. Okay, so a little bit of bad luck, but uh, I'm going to have to ask you to just type one of these numbers. So one, two, three, or four in the chat, uh, because the poll, uh, eh, you know, 2023 technology happens, right? So just shout in the chat, one, two, or three, um, and we will have someone uh, say, well, it, it feels like a number one, number two, number three, number four, and we'll take it from there. So hit up that chat. Shout a number. All right, so we're seeing a lot of one technology, software and internet, which is good. I think uh, we might have a lot of people in that industry as well. So think about technology, software and internet. So it might be, of course, tech companies, SaaS products, um, digital agencies, web agencies, hosting companies. And I have a couple of examples, some industry headaches. So for example, uh, security, yeah, yeah, we update our passwords once in a while, but 
who knows what vulnerabilities we have. So this would be some bit of confidence within the cybersecurity. So if that's a problem that you, ex you feel excited about, and if it's something that with your skill sets would make sense for you to focus on, that could be one of the things you could focus on. Uh, or for example, of course, the, uh, the app UI, the design is stuck in 2010. Uh, users are complaining, but we don't even know where to fix it. So maybe uh, a team has a lot of developers. They're doing a lot of development focused <laughs> development. Um, and maybe you're a designer who says, you know what, um, no matter how technical the project is, I can easily jump into any project, figure it out within a day or two and come up with a couple of designs. And maybe you can build your product really around tech companies who are not design oriented. Uh, another example, uh, maybe uh, testing of software, it takes ages. Uh, maybe you are very capable in building automated testing, or maybe you have some testing suite, or you have a team of people who can help them with testing. Uh, so there's a lot of that going on. So these would be the problems that you can focus on. And I think it's uh, really important that the, the problem that you pick it should be something you're super excited about and it should be an absolute yes or it's just not the one that you should be focusing on and you can frame this in a lot of different ways there are a few models that you can uh, use for this so i help this industry solve this problem so they can yada 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 but it should be a desired outcome uh, you can do the golden circles by simon sinek the why the how the what and this is how I do it for myself. So I help freelancers score big clients so you can finally take that vacation. And there, of course, is a bit of mystery hidden in there. You should talk about who you're helping, what problems you're solving and why you do what you do. But there's different models to positioning this. So the next part, of course, is you know who you are, you know which industry and what problem you're solving. But then comes the question, how do you solve it? And of course, this is where the design thinking part once again can come in. And maybe you want to build a subscription service. Maybe you want to build a digital product. Maybe you want to build some SaaS product or there's different ways of getting there. But I think it's really important that whenever you're building and designing your business, you always want to try different solutions and get feedback. And more than often, I don't think all of us freelancers are feeling comfortable with getting back to clients like, hey, we've done this. How was it for you? I'd love to hear what you're thinking. Um, for example, uh, a Miro workshop could be one of your solutions. So maybe you're creating your very unique Miro design sprint template, which I think can look very impressive. And you have your solution but now you need to know how to find and attract your clients. So how do you actually design that offer? And at this point, I would really like to uh, explain something to you, which isn't too complex, but it's important to understand and know that it's there. Whenever we talk about a solution or a service that you're actually providing, you can split them into three categories. It could be a done for you, which is what I think most often us, us as freelancers deal with, you get hired to do the job, you spend all your time on it. And on the other end of the spectrum, all the way to the right, there's a done, uh, do it yourself. Sorry about the typo. Uh, of course, download the video, figure it out. Don't call me, don't email me, don't fax me. You do it on your own. But in the middle, there's a done with you, which is a do it together. So figure out which of those three products your service falls into. And maybe you have a product or a solution in each of all, one of those three. Then when it comes to a price point, you can think about a low entry product. So what is something cheap? Maybe it's free. You can use it to generate some leads. You have a mid range product, which could be a guide or a course. It could be a premium product, which is like a three month training program, uh, or maybe an on site solution. And of course you can still have that custom product. But it is something that you should be very careful about, because if you do only focus on the custom product, it'll be very difficult to really work on your business. Uh, so here are some ideas that you can steal. If you need some sort of lead generator, you're looking for new clients or ways to get yourself a seat at the table. Think about one of these ideas 
And if you want more ideas or suggestions, I have something coming up for you as well. And then of course you want to test and learn. So make, before you build your product, just make a deck, make a one pager and start connecting with your potential clients on LinkedIn. Reach out to them, show them what you're thinking of, show them what you're working on. And the introduction call can be very simple. So you, you're talking about, I focus on this industry. I know they have this problem. I've spoken to some of your peers. Could I just for a second show you what I think could be an interesting solution? So if you want more of these types of tools, so for example, if you're looking for inspirations for the freebies, uh, this is my link. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Uh, and this really is um, uh, yeah, the topic of my presentation. Um, so I'm keeping it within time. <laughs> I know, uh, I, hopefully it wasn't uh, too bad. I'm hearing a lot of kind words in the chat. So thank you for that as well. If you do have any questions, uh, don't worry. We have, I think a couple of minutes before they cut me off, just post your questions in the chat and I'd love to answer any questions that you have. Uh, so right now, while I'm still making the pivot from uh, freelance UX design myself, I'm currently helping other freelancers to figure this stuff out how to position yourself as a freelancer, how to become unique within your niche and how to attract new clients. So if you're interested in that, once again, feel free to head over to this link. Uh, you can find my website. I have a lot of digital products that I use myself, lead generations, tools, whatnot. I write a weekly newsletter on these topics um, and I have a free productizer crash course. So if you're interested in repositioning your business or starting to redesign your business you can find it here as well it's been incredibly uh fun to be here with you again this one was my third year in a row um, at distributed uh, and i hope to see you again all next year so if there are not any questions i think uh we're here thank you everyone for joining uh, i hope to connect with you on linkedin send me a message uh, it's been a lot of fun mm -hmm.